Hey everyone, it's Ken here with UAV Coach. Today we're back with the DJI Mini 3 Pro, but today we're gonna be doing some flight comparisons against the Autel Evo Nano Plus. We'll test various features and we'll see how they compare head to head. So let's get started. All right, so let's start off with what they both have in common, at least according to the manufacturer spec sheets. Both drones are 249 grams or less. Both drones have similar flight speeds, flight maximum speeds in sport mode or ludicrous, normal or standard mode, and smooth or cine mode. They're all very similar. They both have similar wind resistance, uh, level five, they both use three axis gimbal stabilization. They both have quick shots. They both shoot 4K video and have similar photo resolution. And they both have HDR capability. There are some notable differences. The Mini 3 Pro has a battery life of 34 minutes with the standard battery. The Nano Plus is about 28 minutes. The Mini 3 Pro also has an option of a what they call a battery plus intelligent flight battery plus which claims 47 minute flight time the controllers are different in that the mini 3 pro actually has an option of two different controllers one being the uh, rc controller with the screen built in the other one requires a, a phone similar to the autel in addition, the Mini 3 has tracking capabilities that the Nano Plus has yet to implement. These include Active Track, which will follow people, bikes, and cars, a spotlight feature that keeps the drone in one place while the camera moves to where the subject goes, and Point of Interest, which rotates around a subject and follows the subject if it's moving. Brand new is Vertical Shooting, where the camera actually rotates 90 degrees to capture photos and video in a vertical or a portrait versus landscape perspective. Okay, so we've talked about the manufacturer's specification sheets of each drone. Now let's do some head-to-head -head comparisons in flight. Although we were testing in some extreme wind conditions in multiple tests, the Mini 3 consistently handled wind and gusts better than the Nano Plus. The Mini 3 was actually surprisingly stable in high wind for a drone that weighs less than 249 grams. If we look at maximum speeds of each drone, they're very similar. It's hard to test this accurately if you're not in a lab, but in the real world across multiple tests, I can say that there's not a huge difference. I will say that similar to hovering, the Nano Plus seems to be more affected by wind in the speed tests. Switching over to photo and video quality. The Mini 3 has three options for photo format. 48 megapixel with a four to three aspect ratio, and no HDR capability, 12 megapixel with a four to three aspect ratio and HDR capability, and 12 megapixel in a 16 to nine aspect ratio with HDR capability. All formats capture JPEG and RAW. The Mini 3 can capture 4K video up to 60 frames per second, but only up to 30 frames per second in HDR. In slow motion mode, the Mini 3 captures video in 1080p at 120 frames per second. Color profiles are normal or decent alike, except in slow motion where only normal is available. The Nano Plus has three options for photo format. 50 megapixel in JPEG with a 4 to 3 aspect ratio, 12 and a half megapixel in a 4 to 3 aspect ratio, and 8.3 megapixel in a 16 to nine aspect ratio with HDR capability, also in JPEG only. The Nano Plus can capture up to 4K video at 30 frames per second in HDR or in a log color profile. And at 1080p up to 60 frames per second. Here's a look at photos and video comparisons using the HDR capabilities of each drone. 
We talked about flight times, in other words, how long the battery will last in flight. Manufacturers test in labs under ideal conditions, so you can't really expect to get what they claim, but let's see how close they come. For simplicity, I simply let the drones hover in the same location until the battery was completely depleted. The Nano Plus is interesting. The failsafe return to home works like it should, but since I wanted to test to the absolute maximum time I could get out of these batteries, I continued to apply thrust to keep the drone in the air rather than just letting it land. Eventually, the Nano Plus just fell out of the sky. I was able to get just under 21 minutes from the battery. I used the same procedure for the Mini 3, where I just hovered in place until the drone triggered the, re the return to home, and I held the drone in the air as long as I could. The difference is that the Mini 3 eventually took over and landed. At that point, I couldn't override the controls, which prevented the drone from falling out of the sky. I was able to get just under 27 minutes from the standard battery on the Mini 3 Pro. Just for fun, I thought I would test the optional Intelligent Battery Plus, although it wasn't really a fair comparison because I took the drone out to fly in some very high wind rather than just hover in place for 40 minutes. I was able to get almost 34 minutes from that battery. The return to home accuracy on these drones is good, but it's not perfect. Although the accuracy varies every time you land the drone, I have to say that the Nano Plus is more consistently on target. So what would convince me to buy one drone over the other? There are many similarities, but there are some differences. For example, the video and photo quality on the Nano Plus seem to be a little bit better than the Mini 3 Pro. However, the fact that the Nano Plus actually falls out of the sky when you deplete the battery is just unacceptable to me. The items that really sway me to the Mini 3 Pro are cost, the options that you have with the long flight time battery, the RC controller, and in my opinion, the Mini 3 Pro just handles a little bit better. It's a little smoother and just a little bit more stable. As always, we welcome your thoughts and your comments, so please comment below but I hope this review has been helpful and informative. Don't forget that if you're flying as a recreational pilot for fun, you're still required to take the trust test by the FAA, and UAV Coach is a certified administrator of that test. We'll leave a link below. So that's it for this video. We will be doing another video with the Mini 3 Pro, using it in some real world applications and we'll demonstrate ways to become more proficient. Leave comments below about how you plan to or want to use the Mini 3 Pro and we'll try to use those in our video. Until then, all of us here at UAV Coach wish you blue skies and safe flying. Bye for now.